Sticky tape. All right. I don't want a respirator. This clear coat is harsh stuff. I have my clear coat. It's been sitting in the sun for a while, so it's nice and warm. This is Spray Max 2K Glamour. It's two part. I don't know why I have my respirator on already. On the bottom of the can, there's this tab. You have this little red thing. Tab goes on the red thing, right? The red thing goes on the tab. Then, you give it a couple good whacks and start shaking. Haha, <laughs> I know, that's what she said. Compressed air. Knock the dust off. Sides first. One minute. Sides again. Okay, I really like this clear. If you know how to manage it, you can put this entire can on this guitar in the span of about 10 minutes without getting any runs. The only reason I'm doing that is because the paint is so thick in the cracks, we have to build it up. It's gonna take this entire can, it's a lot of sanding, and then probably one more can to get it smooth. Try to keep dirt off your hands. That's it. Okay, my friends, I know the lighting is not the best in here, but uh, I'm basically level sanding with 400. And people will tell you you need to use a sanding block. You can if you want to. Um, I have perfectly fine results just using my fingers spread out like this. And using my pads, not putting too much pressure on the tip, but just kind of riding it with the as much of the side of the flesh of the fingers as I can. There's uh, large gaps in between all these black spots that where the clear has sunk in. So what we need to do is shave as much as we can off of these black spots so that way our next layer of clear fills in those gaps a little more and then you know hopefully it'll just be the next one because i'm trying to go as far as i can using 400 grit by the way I'm trying to go as far as i can without burning through um but if it's not enough we may end up using three cans of clear that's what the uh, big thing about these crackle finishes is and why they're so expensive even when you do them at home because each can of clear is 20 bucks. You're about 60, probably about $66 in uh, just clear coat on these. And then you got the the uh, crackle paint, which is like 10 bucks. And then regular paint, which is like five bucks. So, you, you know, almost $90 just for uh, changing the color of a guitar to something kind of reptilian and crazy. But yeah, that's basically basically it so I'm, I'm level setting this body and then we're gonna go shoot the next layer on there's a train but real quick i made this pit guard i have my mask on so sorry about the voice and the train but uh i will be clearing this as well clean it off over and over again over and over again i did let it acclimate to the outside temperature 
I don't even know if you can hear me, but acclimated to the temperature. I've cleaned it off several times. Now I'm just making sure there's nothing else that's going to cause any fogging of the clear coat or any kind of other weird problems. Want to keep it looking as sharp as we can in between coats. Compressed air, blow the dust off. Well, see, I just noticed a little bit of white on here. Warm can. Now we're going to do a flash coat. Stock edges first. Alright, here we go again. All right, that coat's a little heavier. It's a little humid out here, so you can see it's blushing a little bit. I'm gonna have to wait a few minutes before I can do another coat. Last coat, then I gotta take it right in the house because it's too humid out here. Alright, that is it. Gotta take it in the house. Right now. Okay, my friends. Uh, like I said, these are quick videos, but if you remember, we just did our second coat of clear. This is two whole cans on here. I think that's all we're going to need. If you see, I have this light at a, at a steep angle, way over there. Uh, I have it shining down at an angle so that I can see all the grooves so I know when this starts to smooth out. I'm using 800 grit paper to start with. We're going to go up to 1,000, 1,500, 2,000, 2,500, maybe 3,000, and then we're going to actually polish this thing. But so what we're doing is uh, I'm looking at the angle of the light. Let's see if I can show you. You can see how there's these little ridges, and then you go up here, and they're starting to disappear. Uh, we just have to go until they're all gone, and at this point, there should be enough clear on here that we can... Uh, get rid of the bumpiness without having fear of burning through because that's the whole point of all this So I'm gonna keep up with this and I'll show you how it looks when I'm done with the 800 and I have it all cleaned off Okay, so here we are uh, we've gotten <clears throat> through 800 grit on the front This took well over an hour, but we're pretty much flat there Maybe some very, very tiny little shiny spots still on the edges, but those will go away because uh, they're they're pretty much level anyway. Um, there's some areas down here below where the pit guard is that I didn't go in, go in and level because, you know, why? No one will see that. But uh, it takes forever with these kind of finishes, but it's, it's worth it because we're going to have a gloss just mirror shine, and I did not burn through anywhere. I started with 800 grit, and your first grit is your leveling grit. Remember that. You should take care of all 
of your shininess, your low spots with your first grit. All the rest of the grits we're going through are for no other reason than to get rid of the scratch marks of the subsequent grit. So 1,000 is to get rid of 800, 1,500 is to get rid of 1,000, and so on, up until you get to where your buffing, uh, your heavy cut buffing grit will be able to polish out those scratches. So it's all for the long game. You have to start. It's all just like just like painting the instrument. It's about prep. All this level sanding is prepping for buffing. So that way, when we buff it, uh, it'll be just mirror, just glorious. Hopefully, hopefully, as long as we don't burn through on the other grits too. You don't have to sand nearly as long. Like I'll probably only do a thousand grit on the front for maybe 15 minutes on the back. Same deal. And every other grit after that will probably be about 10 to 15 minutes. So uh, yeah, we're gonna keep going. All right, my friends, real quickly, I want to talk about this giraffe-looking pit guard. So, almost every pit guard you get has a layer of plastic on it. When you get it, you peel that off and you expose a nice shiny layer. Well, that shiny layer on the pit guard is actually another much thinner layer of plastic. So, if you want to paint a pit guard, you have to get that layer off. So, I painstakingly peeled that off. Once you do that, there's a little adhesive left behind on the ABS. So then you have to sand it. So I sand that with uh, uh, 320 and then 400 gets all that off. And then you have a nice surface to paint. And then you go heavy with the clear coat like I did here. And uh, I was going to sand this smooth as well. But I kind of want to have all the protection I can on this. So that if a pick hits it, it's not going to hurt it that much. And it will be very strong. because there's, there's a lot of uh, clear coat on this. So I'm probably going to leave this kind of textured, which will look kind of neat against the uh, smooth body anyway, because it's going to have like a, a reptile skin effect. But uh, yeah, so I just want to explain this pit guard, so that way if you want to paint a pit guard, you know you have to get that plastic off, two layers at least, and then the adhesive off before you rough it and paint it. Alright guys, sorry for these ultra close-up shots, but I kind of have a the wrong lens on here. I need to find my 24 mil. Anyway. So here we go, we have it uh, all sanded up to 3000 grit. You can see there's a haze on it, but it looks very smooth and it, it really is smooth. You can see the light on there in that haze and our goal is gonna have this, make this light right here be a mirror. So everybody asked me what I use to achieve that. And again, I'm a home guy, I don't have a big buffing wheel in the garage, but I use uh, Meguiar's Ultra Cut Compound, which you can find at uh, Advanced Auto Parts, that's where I got it. I buy the big thing, it lasts forever. And then uh, this one that's got spray paint on it is a uh, <laughs> Meguiar's Mirror Glaze Professional Machine Glaze. And this is what I finish with. And I'll usually do both of these twice. So hold on one second, I'll bring you in and show you exactly how I do it. Oh, I also have a couple of these mops for my drill. That's what I use, usually. All right, so I use a good bit of it. I usually will do about half the guitar at a time. Starting with the front, I usually will start with the back. And I just make sure to get the mop completely saturated. I'm just gonna pull it off. And also this uh, mop, I just washed it so it's, it's wet, which is actually good. And you just go over the whole thing. Uh, you can go a little faster if you like, but I'm not trying to get spatter all over my living room table. <laughs> Also, the weight of the machine is enough. You don't need to push it on there. Okay, my friends, this is just one pass. So you can already see the ceiling fan in there. That's just one pass with the heavy cut. Let me see if I can pull that back. So uh, we're doing all right. You still see there's a little bit of haze, but we're getting there. Um, looks good down on the bottom. Uh, right up here, had, had a couple issues, but we'll be fine. But uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's polishing out pretty good. I think uh, when I get to the machine glaze, I'm just gonna do it by hand because you have to sand these clear coats so much on these to get through, uh, to get the bumpiness down that I'm just, I'm just worried I'll burn through if I don't uh, do that by hand. So when we get to the high cut, we're gonna do it by hand. And actually I may do one more pass with the heavy cut by hand first. But uh, yeah, it's looking good. Hey, coconut. <clears throat> <laughs> All right, friends. Well, 
I uh, wanted to show you guys the results of this out in the sun one day, but you know it's Florida, so we never have any sunshine anymore. So I thought I would just do it in the house here, and uh, yeah, you can really see how it came out. Just super, super shiny, and I'm pretty happy with it. Um, it's kind of really hard to get a good idea. Like once again, I like to do this kind of thing out in the sunshine. I left this a little bit rough. I wanted it to feel kind of like reptile skin but the body is, is ultra smooth. Let me flip it over for you. <clears throat> Got my little logo on the back here, of course. Probably actually need to wipe the back off a little bit. It's still got a little polishing agent on it, but I think it came out all right, everybody. Hope you dig it. And uh, see the, the fan there. I will definitely be doing more of this kind of thing. Um, I'm, I'm going to do one more video, I think, about this guitar where we actually do the sound demo. I figure there's no real point in doing uh, a big sound demo in this video, too. But we'll do that, and then we will have some talking points because you guys have asked some cool questions in the comments, and uh, I've got a couple things I would like to say about it. But uh, yeah, tell me what you think down below. I know you guys must like spending 10 hours polishing clear coat. That's how long it took me to do this. You know, mostly by hand and leveling, sanding, and all that fun stuff. But, uh, yeah, let me know what you think, guys, this whole PV Raptor deal. I had a, a lot of fun doing it, and I hope you guys enjoy it. And I will see you in the next one.